If you've seen any of the other videos on this channel, you know there aren't any lovers of Microsoft around here. But while some might think that this is more of a let's pick on the big corporation for the fun of it because we're trolls, it goes a lot deeper than that. But just in case those words mean absolutely nothing to you, let me show you where this is coming from. This is coming from someone who didn't just bet on the wrong console generation once, but twice. So safe to say, this is coming from someone who invested heavily in the Microsoft ecosystem, at least when it came to gaming. So this is a genuine concern from someone who has been a loyal customer to Microsoft. This isn't just another console war soldier. There was no PS4 to be seen while this was under the TV. And now this is just a Blu-ray player and it can't even do that. It stopped doing that. Great. Maybe because of that full page ad they're trying to shove down everyone's throat. So a Windows 10 gaming PC is what replaced that. So let's take you through why that said gaming PC had Windows wiped from it entirely, why no PC in this house will ever have Windows installed on it ever again, and why it might be worth you considering the same for yourself. Let's start at the top. PCs all have different functions, but normally the very first thing you do with a PC is log on to it. At least that's the default. Used to be back in the day, there was this magical thing called auto login. So if your PC didn't have personal information on it of any sort, and that was a shared family PC for everyone to play games or surf the internet and it just didn't matter, you could auto log into it. Or more importantly these days, with people trying to make their own Steam consoles, you could sit on the couch, turn on your PC and have it automatically log in and boot up Steam. But you don't have that choice anymore if you're using a Windows PC. In fact, the amount of hoops you have to jump through just to make auto login work, going into regedit, just to mess with files that are designed not to be messed with by a user, just so you can have the privilege of auto login. It's ridiculous, especially when so many other operating systems on the market actually give you the option to auto login. It shouldn't be so hard to do such a simple task on your own PC. But why does Microsoft insist that you use a password every time you log into your PC, regardless of how you want to use that PC? Well, let's look at the next thing they won't let you do anymore. Local accounts. Back in the day, you created an account that was unique to your PC. If you wanted to go to a different PC, you would have to create a different account. And those two accounts, even if they had the same name and password, were isolated. Separation, containerization, and actually a good thing for privacy. These days, you have to have a Microsoft email address to use a Windows 11 PC. At least that's the way that Microsoft is pushing it because even the workarounds to get a local account working on a new Windows computer, which are slowly being broken as we go, even though people keep finding new ways, Microsoft keeps breaking it, a running theme. Now they're going to get to the point where you can't even use the PC with a local account. So let's talk about that magical media PC that should be able to auto log in. So now anyone who wants to use that PC either needs to have their own Microsoft email, or if you want them to use yours, this is already getting way too complicated for a family PC, but now everything they do on that PC will be tied back to your email. And even if you're using a spam email, every time a retailer sends you a sale, Microsoft now not only knows the computer you're using it on, but also knows where you potentially shopped. They're building a profile on you. And to make things worse, they're sharing that data with hundreds of advertisers. Hundreds of advertisers. No, I didn't leave that in twice by accident. And they disclose it as if, what are you gonna do? Switch operating systems? And because you had to sign in with your email address, everything you do on that PC will be tied back to you so that they can sell ads back to you. And anything else anyone else does on that PC under your account will be tied back to you. Because you're not just using Windows, Windows is using you. But this isn't the first channel to tell you that Windows is stealing your data, and it definitely won't be the last. 
everything you do on Windows is being tracked. The amount of internet traffic happening on your PC when you're doing absolutely nothing and the amount of that traffic that is just Microsoft, even if you haven't installed something else, is astronomical for a PC that should be idle. Isn't it a bit weird that your PC is always doing something even if you're not doing something on your PC? And if you don't believe me, check your task manager because that's where it all is. Lots of processes that you'll have a tough time figuring out what they actually do because Windows is proprietary software, meaning that you can't see the code in there. Only Microsoft can. So only Microsoft can tell you exactly what's going on and they're not going to because that would hurt their bottom line. And just in case you didn't think that was creepy enough, guess what's coming to a Windows 11 PC near you? Copilot, recall, AI shoved into your operating system whether you like it or not, because they dominate the market, so no one can tell them no. So now, every few seconds, your PC will be taking screenshots of your desktop and anything you're doing on said desktop. And even though they've said this will only be stored on your device locally, do you really believe them? Because we all believed them when they said Game Pass was profitable, and then they increased the price, but we'll get onto that part later on. For now, the idea of someone walking past your PC every few seconds to see what you're doing, shouldn't you have a choice whether that sort of thing is installed on your computer? Well, no, you don't, because it's not your computer. The moment you install Windows, you relinquished the right to do what you want with your computer. So maybe you're going to argue the, I have nothing to hide way of thinking, but there's a reason we lock the front door to our house. Let's pretend for a moment that you are a nefarious actor, someone who wants to do something bad and take advantage of people. And you also happen to be some sort of software developer or hacker. So you know your way around a computer, you know how to write software, and you're going to use these skills for bad purposes. If you were going to design a virus, which operating system would you design it for? Have a look at the market share. What's going to reap the most rewards for your efforts. Let me tell you, the time I spent on Apple, I didn't have a single virus and that was over a decade. That's not to say that Mac viruses don't exist, but they're rare because people aren't often targeting people on Macs. The same goes for alternative operating systems. But now those people, if they get their software, their malware, their virus running on your computer, now they have a treasure trove of things to pick from. They don't just have your most recent email. They have every screenshot that your computer has ever taken. They have your banking details because they don't get scrubbed when Copilot or Recall takes a photo of it every few seconds. They know everything about you and can impersonate you to a T. But maybe one of your solutions is, I just won't update. If I don't update, then that means that I won't get any of this spyware being installed forcibly. But you don't get a choice when to update either. We've previously mentioned how the Microsoft Store now stops you from choosing when to update said apps. So if an app goes bust, or there's something in that app that you don't like, for example, all the nonsense that happened with newer versions of Firefox at the beginning of this year, well, if you installed it through the Microsoft Store, guess what? You don't get to choose. Microsoft is going to auto install them which is a step too far from people who might argue that automatic updates on your Windows PC were important for security to protect against those bad actors. But it's your PC. You should still get a choice when to do those updates, but you don't. I'm sure your boss will understand when your Windows PC randomly shuts down in the middle of say an important meeting or just before a deadline with your work unsaved, just for it to spend, if you're lucky, minutes booting back up while it does forced updates. Even though you said, whichever option was closest to not now, I'm busy. Or if you're really unlucky, hours to do those updates. Try telling your boss that it's Microsoft's fault that you can't finish your work. And furthermore, how many times has an update broken another app or program that was working perfectly fine before? These aren't just hypotheticals. This is coming from personal experience. And what were those updates again? Well, when your PC restarts, hey, tell me if you've heard this one before, especially on this channel, you get a full page ad. A full page ad telling you to use Microsoft's recommended browser settings. In fact, 
Moments after this photo was taken, this PC had all of its data backed up. And then once that data was backed up in multiple places, Windows was wiped from this computer, never to be installed again. And why are they saying use Microsoft's recommended browser settings? Why not say Microsoft Edge and be honest with people? Well, big corporations being honest is far too much to ask for in 2025. But there's a reason people don't like Edge. You should be able to use a Windows PC with any browser you want. Remember when you couldn't even change the default browser or the default apps and they made it extremely hard for you to go through and change what the default browser was for every single extension? And what are they doing with Microsoft Edge? The same thing they're doing with Windows. The same thing they're doing with Outlook. They're using that data to train their AI to sell you more things for all of those hundreds of advertisers which pay them for the privilege. So if you said use Edge here, then people wouldn't want to click but use Microsoft's recommended browser settings, people might accidentally click on that. And that's what they're betting on. So perhaps you think, all right, that's fine. I'll just go and uninstall Edge and everything will be fine. Go to add and remove programs right now. If you're in a Windows computer, go to add and remove programs. Now scroll down and tell me how many apps you can't uninstall. Isn't that odd? Because if it's system apps, things the computer absolutely needs to function, we all understand that. But why does Microsoft need Edge to function? Because it didn't need Edge before Edge existed. Windows 8 didn't need Edge. Windows 7 didn't need Edge. So if you've built the operating system so poorly that it will fall down the moment Edge is uninstalled, you've done a really bad job. And if it's not that, and you've actually built a really good operating system, then this is just removing more choice from people. Whichever way you spin it, it's bad. I should be able to uninstall anything I want on my computer. Some might even argue that they should be able to uninstall things even if it breaks. I'm not gonna go that far, but still, you should be able to uninstall Edge. You should be able to uninstall these other programs and you can't because it's not your computer. So these updates happen after you restart your computer. Why don't we just not restart our computers? Well, besides the fact that there is the occasional security update you might need. Putting your computer to sleep on Windows, at least the last time I was using a Windows computer, was broken. Put it to sleep, the computer wakes back up immediately. Put it to sleep again, it wakes back up again. Maybe sometimes you get lucky and the sleep function works, but if that PC is in your bedroom, get ready to be woken up at three in the morning with a login screen. Guess what's on the login screen? An ad for using Edge. And then you end up turning off your computer anyway, because you wouldn't mind getting some sleep. But here's the other thing, after everything we've discussed here, everything we have gone over, do you think that it's just the sleep function being broken? Or do you think perhaps the company which is sharing all of your data with hundreds of advertisers, perhaps is trying to get more of your data while you're trying to get some shut eye? I'm not saying I know this for a fact, but it starts to play with your mind. If they're willing to go this far, where's the line? Where do they stop? Being a monopolistic company, that line doesn't exist. But maybe you really, really don't care how many ads you get. Maybe you consider yourself immune to advertising. Or perhaps you just want the newest and shiniest things and you don't care how many times things break. You just want the newest updates because that's just what you want. Well, this was covered in great length all across the internet when it was first announced, but it's worth mentioning again. Microsoft requires a TPM 2.0 chip. So if you want to upgrade to Windows 11 and you don't have that in your computer, your otherwise perfectly good hardware that absolutely didn't need a TPM chip, and not a lot of people knew what a TPM chip was until Microsoft said you needed one, now you need to throw out perfectly good hardware, which now becomes e-waste, just so you can use a Windows 11 computer. But maybe you want to stay on Windows 10 and there are so many people trying to stay on Windows 10. Guess what? No security updates. So all those people who decided that they were going to make horrible software to take advantage of people, well, now they have the doors wide open for anyone who wanted even the smallest illusion of privacy while using Windows because without those security updates, it's a threat. By the way, did you notice how many similarities there were between Windows 10 and 11? 
This wasn't the Windows 8 10 jump. This wasn't the 7 to 8 jump. This wasn't even the Vista to 7 jump. They felt almost identical besides a new coat of paint. So the excuse of we can't do security updates, it's planned obsolescence. They're trying to get you to buy new hardware. It's almost the same as when Apple was slowing down everyone's older phones, so they would naturally want to buy newer phones. And speaking of Apple, one thing that both Apple and Microsoft have in common in 2025 is how neither of them care about gaming. We've just mentioned the profitable Game Pass. Yeah, okay, we all believe you, sure. And it wouldn't be a fiscal year without Microsoft shutting down studios and canceling games before they ever had a chance. Even though Microsoft is out there preaching how committed they are to gaming. At this point, I hope everyone is catching on to the fact that when big corporations say something, don't listen to them. They're not saying it to you, they're saying it to their shareholders. Customers, consumers, everyday people who haven't invested stocks and shares into the company, they don't matter. It's just the shareholders. Line go up. But if you still think Microsoft cares, check this out. A version of Windows where you don't use a keyboard and mouse. Hold on a second. We have different lobbies for online games between controller and keyboard and mouse players. Being that keyboard and mouse players have an advantage and you can aim a lot faster with a mouse. So now we're going to take that away. So Windows 12, no keyboard and mouse. So how are you meant to play games on Windows 12? You're not. And with the Xbox brand essentially being shut down at this point between rumors of canceled consoles and AI being shoved into absolutely everything, including gaming, Windows won't be the place to game anymore. Neither will Xbox, it might not even exist. Remember, this is all coming from someone who played exclusively on Xbox. This brand used to do things well. The 360 era was incredible. Now, where are their exclusives? dead. And where is the privacy? Where's the security? Where is the genuine feeling of wanting to improve the Windows product for the entire world? It doesn't exist. It's all about making as much money from us as possible. And that doesn't mean taking our money directly. That means taking our data because our data is worth something. And we shouldn't be just giving it away for free, especially to a company like Microsoft. But thanks to Valve and the Steam Deck, you don't have to play all of your PC games on Windows anymore. That massive collection of games, you'd be surprised how many of them work on alternative operating systems. So I'd encourage you, look for another solution because at this point, Windows is only going to get worse. So get out while you still can.